I was born loving animals. I met Tarzan when I was 10. I made the vow I would go, grow up, go to Africa, live with wild animals and write books about them. And everybody laughed except my amazing mother. And I attribute so much of what I've done to her support. She would say, if you really want to do this, you're probably going to have to work really hard, take advantage of opportunity and never give up. We didn't have any money. It was World War II raging. Um, Africa was far away. Girls didn't do that sort of thing. I heard from somebody, if you're interested in animals, you should meet Dr. Lewis Leakey famous paleontologist. Anyhow, that led to him offering me this extraordinary opportunity of going to study and learn from not any animal, but the one most like us, the chimpanzee. It took a year to get the money. After all, I hadn't been to college. We couldn't afford it. So who was going to give money for this ridiculous idea? A young woman out in the forest studying chimpanzees and eventually there was money for just six months. And I arrived at the Gombe National Park in Tanzania and I was getting increasingly depressed because money for six months, but after one month, two months, and three months, the chimpanzees were still running away. The breakthrough observation was when I saw one chimpanzee, the first one who began to lose his fear of me. He was using and making tools. And so it was that observation that enabled Leakey to go to the National Geographic Society, and they agreed to fund the research when that first six months ran out. Well, when I'd been in the field about two years, and I'd learned a lot, Leakey told me that he wouldn't always be around to get money for me. I would have to stand on my own two feet I would need a degree. Many of those erudite professors told me I'd done everything wrong. You shouldn't have given the chimpanzees names. That's not scientific. They should have had numbers. You can't talk about them having personalities. You can't talk about them having minds capable of solving problems. You certainly can't talk about them having emotions. Those are unique to us. After I got my PhD, I went back to Gombe. I built up a research station. They were the best days of my life. Why did I leave that paradise? I left because in 1986, there was a conference in America, but we had a session on conservation. And so I'm learning about all the problems that we have inflicted on the planet, the destruction of the forest, releasing more CO2 into the atmosphere, the most significant of the greenhouse gases, learning about the pollution of the ocean, the plastic, learning about the, the uh, poisoning of the air, water and land, the chemical pesticides and fertilizers. You know about all the different things we're doing to this planet. You know about the extinction of species. You, you, you understand that we're moving rapidly towards a point of no return. And so it was pretty grim. I went to that conference as a scientist and I left as an activist. So since October 1986, I haven't been in any one place consecutively for more than three weeks. I left knowing I had to do something to help I was meeting young people who seemed to have little hope for the future. They were mostly just apathetic, not seeming to care, but some were depressed and some were angry. But was it true that there was nothing the young people could do about it? I thought not. And I started in 1991 a program for youth called Roots and Shoots, and it began with 12 high school students in Tanzania and it's now in 140 countries with about 100,000 active groups with members from kindergarten through university, even some adult groups. We don't tell them what to do except choose a project that makes the world better for people, for other animals, for the environment we all share. I think the problem is we've got this disconnect between this clever brain. We are the most intellectual creature that's ever walked the planet and the human heart, that's love and compassion. And if there's a disconnect here, 
this means that we're making all these bad decisions. And I honestly believe that only when head and heart work in harmony can we achieve our true human potential and save the planet. And we don't have that much time. Thank you.